Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to Target Focus Life. My name's Steve, and today we're taking a look at the Mossberg Gold Super Sport. So if you're looking for a detailed and in-depth review, you've come to the right place. Let's go! Guys, when it comes to hearing protection, I say it's always better safe than sorry. You can't go too far. That's why I've been using the walkers, right? They make awesome muffs. I love these ones. They're cool. They're electronic, so you can hear well. You don't have to yell at people while you're wearing Ear Pro. They got other muffs, a lot of different muffs. They got Bluetooth corded. These are cool. They got wireless Bluetooth. Was I yelling that whole time? I feel like I was kind of yelling. Wireless Bluetooth in ear. These are what I wear when I shoot. Want to give a huge shout out to walkers. Keep my ears protected. I got a link and discount code in the description. A lot of great options. Let's get back to the video. So the intended use of the Mossberg Gold Super Sport is just like the name implies, sporting. We're talking clay shooting here. This is not primarily a uh, upland hunting gun. You could use it but primarily sporting. One of the cool things about this gun is the MSRP. This gun comes in at 1408 MSRP with a lot of adjustability. And when you look at other guns similar to this that have this type of adjustability, generally you're gonna be in the 2000 plus range. So this comes in as a price point model for someone that's looking for a, a sporting gun with good adjustability that's not going to be quite as expensive. The Gold Super Sport is in 12 gauge, but if you just go to the base gold model, which actually has a lower MSRP, the base gold is 1135. So basically the difference is you don't have the adjustability of the stock. A lot is the same. They also make that in a 410. Uh, they do not have a 20 gauge in the gold until you get to the black label. Basically the black label is very similar gun, only it has a black receiver. In fact, I'll be reviewing one of those coming up soon. So the weight of this gun is eight pounds, 8.8 .8 ounces. So it is a heftier gun, but we're talking about a sporting gun, a target gun. It's okay to have that extra weight. It's gonna help you manage recoil, shoot higher volumes. I don't mind the weight as long as it's balanced and proportionate. The length of pull is, as you can see, adjustable. You can go from 13 and a half inches to 15 inches. I have played with this gun a little bit. I got it quickly set up. Looks like 14 and 15, 16. So I'm nearly 15 inches here on the length of pole. About got it maxed out. As far as drop, that is also adjustable. Not only do you have the comb that can drop, but you can also adjust the butt pad and slide that so you can have it, make sure it's right into your shoulder. Uh, a lot of adjustability on this. I like it. You can tow out as well with these two pegs. You can loosen those and cant it. It wasn't necessarily the most intuitive gun to adjust the stock, but the fact is you have quite a bit of adjustability. A lot to like about that. When we look at the drop, I have a longer neck, longer face. So like our drop at the peak is about an inch and a quarter and we're about an inch and a half at the face and about an inch and three quarter at the end of the comb. So that's set up for me, that works well. A big thing I'm talking about now in reviews is making sure a gun can adjust to fit you well because you can have a great gun with all sorts of cool features, but if it doesn't fit you well, it's gonna be a struggle. Uh, we've made some fitting videos to help you understand the elements of gun fit. I got fitted by Dell Whitman. We made a video of that. So check those out, you can kind of understand more about the elements, the principles of shotgun fitting. Now this gun does come with five extended chokes, all color coded, that's cool. But we've already went ahead and switched out for some Carlson Sporting Clay chokes. I do have a link to those in the description with a discount code. This gun has a 30 inch barrel. I believe that is the only option in the Super Sport. The gold, uh, the regular gold model, I think has some different barrel configurations. Okay, enough specs. Let's look at the ergonomics of this gun. We're looking at the, the form, the function, the feel. First thing I noticed when I grabbed this gun is it does have a right-handed palm swell. I can feel that. I like a nice palm swell on a sporting gun for sure. The forend is very basic. It does have some grooves up here in front to kind of wrap your hands around. I like to point my finger. Seems like this gun will allow that. Maybe not quite how I would like. 
I have to get my thumb up on this top ridge. The checkering is not very aggressive, which is probably okay on this type of gun. You're not gonna be handling a lot of recoil, so you don't need a real aggressive texture. It does have a top tang safety with selectable barrels. It has ejectors, full ejectors. At the price point, as you can imagine, you're not gonna get super high-end engraving. Uh, this looks like a, a cheaper engraving. Just gonna be honest with you there, but they do have some cool engraving on the top lever. I like that detail. The rib is a flat rib off the top lever. It's not stepped up, it's not a high rib. It is a vented rib with a vented barrel, fiber optic front. As you all know, I could do without that. I don't need no stinking bright fibers catching my eye when I'm shooting clays because where's my focus? It's on the clay. It says gold reserve on the bottom with a gold M for Mossberg. That looks kind of cool. The wood, kind of basic, just a standard grade wood as you could expect at this price point. Let's take a look at the trigger. Actually has mechanical triggers. Um, so it does not need the shotgun to reset it, to shoot, it just resets mechanically. Triggers did feel a bit heavy. It's a good break, like there's not much for pre-travel. They do feel heavy. So we'll put them on the scale here and see what we're working with. Six pounds, 8.6 ounces. Six pounds, 6.9 ounces. Okay, so we're right under seven pounds. It's about six pounds, 8.4 ounces. That's actually surprising. Felt uh, again heavier. I think it's interesting that weight isn't just necessarily weight, like how it feels. Some triggers can feel heavier and pull lighter. Some can feel lighter and pull heavier. I don't really understand it fully, to be honest with you, but um, as far as feel of this trigger, I didn't love the feel, but I didn't hate it either. Um, just seems a little heavy to me. I would prefer it closer to five pounds. But anyways, ergonomics wise, there's not really much I would change. I'd prefer a stepped up rib on a sporting gun. I would change out the fiber, of course. But other than that, I think it's, it's pretty solid. I'm able to get full grip contact. I like the grip, get a good placement on that trigger, adjust the stock. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with ergonomics. Let's take a look at recoil and reliability now. A couple shots here for recoil. I took a fair amount of recoil into my face. I should change the pitch of this stock, which you have the option to do. Actually, fairly simple process. Let's actually do that right now, real quick, off camera, and then we'll try it out. That helped a little bit, I would say, changing that pitch, and we could continue to play with it until we got it fully dialed in. I am not 100% sure if we could put a Falcon Strike on this gun. I'd definitely like to try. I'm sure there's a way I could figure it out. This pad is not much of a recoil pad. It's a hard rubber. I could really reduce recoil if I threw that Falcon Strike on there. Let's try to shoot a couple clays here. Yeah, still taking it into the face quite a bit. I'll have to play with that stock some more. Uh, should be able to get that recoil reduced, uh, whether th through stock configuration or a Falcon Strike uh, for target loads. And uh, what was it, eight pounds, 8.4 ounces, something like that gun. I am surprised how much recoil I am getting. Reliability, no real issues there. But of course, we can't really test everything out because we don't have thousands and thousands of rounds. If you do have the gold Super Sport or even a gold, we'd love to hear your feedback on the reliability of the gun, how it's held up over time. Please put those in the comments because when you share, we all get better. Looking at the balance of this gun, it is rear heavy. The balance point is somewhere behind the hinges. And as you can imagine, you know, having all this extra hardware back here does add some weight, especially as I extend the length of pull, that's gonna affect the balance a little bit. So it does feel rear heavy. The front feels like it whips a little bit. Okay, we're just gonna break this gun down really quick. See what we're working with. Four and off. Barrels off. Look, take a look inside here. That is steel, I believe. It's heavy like steel. Fairly solid construction. I don't really have a lot of concerns about this gun holding up over time, but again, that's why we ask y'all to share if you have this gun and let us know how it has held up. We need to put this gun on the clock. We need to really see how it handles when we're speed shooting. 
what the point ability is, how, how we're affected by that balance, what the trigger feels like, all the things coming together to give us an overall feel, and then I'll give you my final thoughts on this Gold Super Sport. 1.26 seconds, two seven split, not fast, here we go. A one, 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 gotta get on them a little faster. Fair amount of muzzle jump. I noticed that second shot has been challenging for me to get on. The gun's jumping a bit. 9-3, that's the fastest by far. 2-3 split though. Having trouble getting those splits down. I don't shoot it incredibly fast. Of course, in the game of sporting clays, you're generally not shooting two clays in 0.93 seconds. But what I'm looking at there is mountability of this gun. I still got to tinker with the stock a little bit more. Like I said, before I started this, I did tinker with it. And I found that I wasn't taking nearly as much recoil to the face. A big part of how the gun delivers recoil, the felt recoil, is how your stock is set up and getting your optimal dimensions definitely goes a long ways. Let me shoot one clay off the machine here. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. Overall, I enjoyed this gun. Recoil was something that was a little bit concerning for how heavy the gun was and having these dimensions kind of roughly set up for me. Still experienced quite a bit of recoil. I'll play with it some more, get this stock figured out. The trigger was probably the low light, although it wasn't incredibly heavy, um, it just was tough. I mean, just really hard to pull, it felt like, which would mean it's heavy, but it's not incredibly heavy. Outside of that, you're getting a lot of gun for the money. Uh, at a $1,400 MSRP, which I'm sure you can find them at retailers for less than that, with this level of adjustability, if you're looking to get into sporting or take it to the next level and don't want to go $2,000 and up from there, I mean, you can spend three, four, five, six, seven, you name it. This may be a great option for you. It is the Mossberg Gold Super Sport. As always, guys, remember, whether you're in the field or in life, you're only going to hit those shots you're laser focused on. So live target focused. See ya.